Howdy folks, and welcome to my Magicka Warden PvP build. Now, the thing with this Magicka Warden character is that this guy was just uh, sitting in my inventory, so to speak. This used to be my PvE healer, but I switched to a Necromancer. So, he was just sitting there doing nothing, didn't even have any gear on. But I always liked how Magicka Wardens play, especially in PvP, and I wanted to try it. So I changed the race from Argonian to Breton and uh, started thinking about the build. What am I going to use? And after a couple of videos on YouTube, they were all practically the same. Everything had the same kind of gear, and uh, that didn't really fit my playstyle, to be honest. So I started experimenting and testing, and I came up with this build, and I absolutely love it. Absolutely. This has become my next favorite character to do PvP content with. To be honest. So I decided to share it with you. So this is a Breton Warden. As you can see, I put 64 points into Magicka. I'm using the Archonac Mundostone. I'm a stage one vampire at the moment. And my maximum magic eye is almost 26k, my maximum health is almost 31k, and maximum stamina 14.6k. My magic recovery is fantastic, 2k. My spell damage is 3.8k, but this is going to go drastically up. Spell create is nothing to write home about. And spell penetration at the moment is 7.7k. And starting with the skills, or abilities if you will. Right now on my front bar I'm using Lotus Blossom. I say right now because it's going to be probably swapped for the mist form when I unlock it. Or one of the morphs. Currently I'm leaning towards the Blood Mist, because I don't need the Major Expedition from the Elusive Mist, but uh, I'll decide that when I get there. And Mist Form, because of Strike from Shadows. This passive gives you 300 weapon and spell damage, well, when you unlock the second stage, when you are a Vampire Stage 2 or higher, and leave Sneak, Invisibility or Mist Form. Next skill, Bird of Prey. This is why I don't need the Major Expedition from the Elusive Mist, because I get it from this one. And it also gives me Minor Berserk, increasing my damage done by 5%. Fetcher Infection is hands down one of the best dots in the game. It deals a ton of damage. Every second cast of this ability deals 50% more damage. And it also afflicts enemies with minor vulnerability, increasing their damage taken by 5%. Deep Fissure, again, deals a ton of damage, but also afflicts enemies with Major Breach. As you can see, my spell penetration at the moment is 7.7k. With Deep Fissure, it's 13.7k. And after the next patch, which is High Isle and should be out next week, this will afflict enemies with Minor Breach as well. So, altogether, my spell penetration will go up to 16.6, 16.7k, which is fantastic. Main spammable, Crushing Shock. And my ultimate is, again, something different. Now, you can use the Northern Storm, which, after the next patch, will give you 300 weapon and spell damage instead of increasing your max magicka. 
which will make this uh, ultimate quite good. But I use Soul Strike. And the morph that I'm going to take is going to be the Soul Assault. I'm using the same ultimate on my Magicka Sorcerer. And the tooltip on the Soul Assault is over 85,000. 85,000. I know that not many people take this morph or take this ultimate at all because it has a cast time or channel time but when you are struggling with killing people like uh, for example you get someone down to 25-30% but they instantly heal up to like full health if you use this ultimate when they're low on health they will absolutely die because there is no way they could out heal it no way you don't out heal 85k damage so i fell in love with this ultimate so to speak and this is the way to go for me On my back bar I'm using the Blue Betty. This is a fantastic tool for Magicka Wardens. It gives you 5k Magicka over 25 seconds and Major Brutality and Sorcery, increasing your weapon and spell damage by 20%. Every 5 seconds it removes one negative effect from you, but that's like that cherry on top. Ice Fortress gives you Major Resolve, increasing your physical and spell resistance by 6k for 25 seconds and Minor Protection, reducing your damage taken by 5%. Corrupting Pollen. Now, this one is interesting. I know people like the other morph, but this morph gives you fantastic healing, well, after 6 seconds, but it also afflicts enemies with Major Defile, reducing their healing received by 16%. And after the next patch, it will also afflict them with minor cowardice. That one reduces their weapon and spell damage by 215. So this morph gives you fantastic healing and it also debuffs enemies like crazy. Living Trellis, this gives you 2.5k health each time you take damage and when it expires it heals you for 6.2k. Rapid Regeneration, 21k health over 5 seconds, nothing more to add. Healing Thicket is my oh shit button. This heals you for 10.2k immediately and it continues to heal you for 3.4k every 1 second for 6 seconds. And I like this more of morph over the other one because this one doesn't give you ultimates but it heals you for 4 seconds even after you leave the area. For the champion points, the green tree doesn't really matter. You can use whatever floats your boat, but I'm using Gifted Rider, Warmount, Rationer and Steed's Blessing. In the blue tree, I'm using Ironclad, which is down here. Untamed Aggression, Deadly Aim, and Master at Arms. In the red tree I'm using Boundless Vitality, Fortified, Sustained by Suffering and Pain's Refuge. For my gear I'm using two different setups when I play this Magicka Warden. This one when I play solo and another one which I will get to in a moment when I play in a group. But in both cases, I'm using Magma Incarnate's monster set. This gives you magic and stamina recovery and 215 weapon and spell damage and 3k armor for 10 seconds every 15 seconds. On my chest, I'm using the Gallant Chain. This is a quest reward from Stross Mackay. If you go there, the quest takes about 10 15 minutes to finish and you get this as a reward and i'm using it to get more maximum health 
I'm also using the Marking Ring of Majesty. This is a mythic ring that gives you 100 weapon and spell damage and 1157 armor for every set you are wearing at least 3 or more pieces of. So in my case it's 200 weapon and spell damage and 2.3k armor. On my back bar I'm using everyone's favorite clever alchemist. This gives you maximum health, more maximum health, weapon and spell damage and when you drink a potion during combat you increase your weapon and spell damage by 651 for 20 seconds. This is one of the most popular, if not the most popular set for PvP. It's craftable so it's easy to get and it actually provides you with some really solid damage. And now the set you've all been waiting for. The one set that makes this build different and it also makes it stand out. And the set is Moon Hunter. You get this from Moon Hunter Keep, and it gives you weapon and spell damage, more weapon and spell damage, critical chance, and when your alchemical poison fires, you increase your weapon and spell damage by 535 for 8 seconds. And you pair Moon Hunter with the Double Dot Poison. You can either use the Crown Lethal Poison version or you can craft it yourself. It makes no difference, both of them. Uh, if you craft the Double Dot Poison, it deals the same damage as the Crown Lethal Poison. And uh, for some reason, I just realized that I had the wrong poison equipped before. So... In the previous parts of this video, you can see Brutality Draining Poison for some reason. But this is the poison to use with the Moon Hunter set. The traits are powered on the back bar Resto Staff, sharpened on the front bar Inferno Staff. All jewelry is infused with Spell Damage Glyphs. I'm using five impenetrable, one well fitted and one reinforced on my body. Now what's so special about the combination of these two sets is that they provide you with some crazy burst damage and burst is king in PvP. If you apply your buffs on your back bar, drink a potion to activate Clever Alchemist, Switch to your front bar, proc your poison by either light attacking or using crushing shock. You will have no issues getting people down to very low health or even killing them outright. And if you don't kill them outright, there is always the soul strike or soul assault morph. After that, you go back to your back bar, reapply the buffs, heal up if you need to, Rinse and repeat, and people will drop like flies. And now let's talk about the gear that I use when I play in a group. I'm still using Magma Incarnate's monster set, Gallant Chain, and Moon Hunter set on my front bar with the Double Dot Poison. But on my back bar, as you may have already guessed, Dark Convergence. This is the most freaking annoying set in the game. It gives you maximum magicka, offensive penetration, weapon and spell damage, and when you cast Corrupting Pollen, it creates this whirlpool that pulls enemies towards the middle, deals a ton of damage, which increases by 50% for each target, applies Major Defile, and after the next patch it will also apply minor cowardice. The second change is in the ultimate section. I don't use the Soul Strike or Soul Assault, I use Northern Storm. Mainly for the major protection, good amount of damage and uh, after the next patch again it will give you 300 weapon and spell damage instead of increasing your max magicka. So this was my Magicka Warden PvP build. 
it's an absolute blast to play. It has become one of my two favorite characters to do PvP content with. And uh, if you are thinking about playing Magic Warden in PvP, I can only highly recommend it. So go out there, kick some ass. I thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.